Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from controlpaint.com, and today let's paint some bamboo. Now the previous video, we left off with a finished line drawing. So today we're gonna take those lines and we're gonna use them to help guide our block in. And the block in, you can think of it as just the rough draft of the color. We're not gonna worry about polish at this point. We just wanna make sure that the colors look like our reference. So as I start out here, I am painting with blue paint. Why am I doing that? Well, what I'm doing here is I'm building up the shape of the silhouette. And I said I wasn't gonna use any digital tricks in this series, but this is one area where I'm gonna break that rule. And the idea is if I paint the silhouette as a single layer, it'll allow me to paint inside the lines moving forward. Well, in order to stick true to my one brush only method, here I'm actually making that silhouette with the same brush we've been using for everything else. So here I'm switching between the brush tool to lay down pigment, and then the eraser tool to carve away what I don't need. And over time, you can see I'm just building up the shape of the silhouette. Now, if you wanna create the silhouette in a different method, go for it. But I just wanted to demonstrate that it is very possible even with the single brush. So there's really nothing special about this, and eventually I end up with a finished silhouette. Now it's important to make this on a single layer, because once I have it, I can hold down Control or Command on a Mac, and click on the layer thumbnail. And when I do that, it just gives me these little marching ants. And then I can convert that selection into a mask on the layer group. I don't wanna go into this in detail right now, but if you're interested, there are videos linked at the bottom of the post that explain it in great detail. The only other digitally specific thing I do here is I set the line art layer to the multiply blending mode. That just means that it's gonna be sort of like a dark overlay. So when I paint underneath, the lines are always visible. Okay, so with all that set up, it's time to start blocking in the actual colors. Now I'm gonna pause it here before we go any further because what we're about to do is not technically challenging. I'm just selecting a color and painting it onto the canvas. I don't even have to worry about staying inside the lines. What is challenging is selecting the right color. This is what we're practicing. This is one of the reasons we do observational studies in the first place, you're training our eye. So you open the color picker, and you don't sample from the reference, you just look at it and try and get a matching color. Is it hard to do? Absolutely. This takes practice. But you'll see that I'm working with a few tricks here. The first thing I'm doing is I'm painting the really big areas first, and then doing more specific variations. So for instance, I painted a big area of green. It's not actually that simple in the real reference, but I just gave it sort of a big broad stroke of green. From my experience, things just go more smoothly if you start really big, the biggest brush you can use, the biggest area of color you can find, and then once you've put paint everywhere, then you start to get more specific. So within the green area, then I can start doing slightly lighter greens and slightly darker greens. Or if there's a shadow, I can add in the shadow. But if I had started very small and painted little tiny strokes, I'd have a harder time getting the general colors to be correct. There's just something about working from big and simple to more and more specific that really makes this process easier. But as you can see from a technical standpoint, I'm not doing anything fancy with layers. I'm not doing anything really digital or Photoshop specific. I'm just picking colors and putting them onto the canvas. There is one trick that I use a lot though, which is thinking about color relatively. So if something's not looking quite right, what I'll do is I'll sample the color that I've put down using the eyedropper tool and then I'll open up the color picker, and I'll just change it a little bit. I might make it a little lighter or a little less saturated. And what I'm trying to do there is sort of fine tune my guess, because my initial guess wasn't quite right. But then if I can get close enough, well then it's all just about tweaking. So I might change it a little lighter, a little darker, and then paint that color down and see if it looks closer. Now the more you practice this, the better your first guess is gonna be. But for now, Expect to do a lot of little fiddling, so get ready to use those relative color moves to really just kind of rein it in and do your fine tuning. Now the last thing I do before finishing up the block in is I actually do a little bit of overall color tweaking. Because I looked at my reference and I looked at my block in and I thought, you know what, it's not quite yellow enough, too green. So to make a quick change like that, I just used the curves adjustment layer, added a little bit of overall red, and call it a day. So at this point, my block in is finished. I have all the colors looking pretty much like they do in the reference. And all that's left is to put in my polish painting. 
So we'll save that for the next video. And until then, if there are any topics that we talked about today that you're not familiar with, really make sure to check out the links at the bottom of the post because I have other videos that explain each of these techniques in further detail. So have fun making your block in and thanks for coming to the site, guys.